Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we'll be taking a look at the Kyrian Covenant for Death Knights. If you watch my previous videos, I'll go over the Covenant abilities, the class ability, and the soul binds. I will have a separate video about the conduits, uh, especially now that they've been available for testing and they're also making some changes to them. But in this video we'll be focusing on the Kyrian Covenant. So the reason I left Kyrian for last is because I find both the class and the general ability somewhat boring. Um, initially, I thought that this covenant would be pretty good in PvP, but later on this, in this video, I'll explain why um, after doing some testing, it really seems like this covenant doesn't really seem to fit with the DK playstyle um, almost at all. Let's take a look at the class-specific ability, which is Shackle the Unworthy. It's a 1-minute cooldown a dot that you cast on your target that lasts 14 seconds, uh, deals damage, and it reduces the target's damage to you by 5%. Also, each rune you spend while this dot is active on your target gives it a 4 second CDR. So if you obliterate your target while it has Shackle the Unworthy active, then you get 8 seconds CDR, every other spell will get you 4 seconds of CDR. This means that you need to play around your runes a little bit, like you do with Gathering Storm and Remorseless Winter, for example. So, if you think about it, if you do your opener, um, and you're at like one rune, then you cast Shackle, now you'll be severely limited in the number of runes you'll be able to spend while it's active on your target, which means that you will most likely end up with a fairly long cooldown on Shackle. Like right here, it ended up with a 20 second cooldown, which is still not bad compared to its original one minute cooldown. However, if you bank up some runes right before casting uh, Shackle, you're essentially able to get the cooldown back off. And as soon as the dot expires, you're able to recast it. So if you look, I cast it at full runes. Then I go in and I spend all my other runes um, like I would in my normal rotation. By the time Shackle is over on my target, I have it back off cooldown. So then, again, I just bank up some runes, cast it again, and uh, start spamming out runes. So it takes quite a bit of like awareness to play around it correctly. And overall, this dot will not do that much damage. It's going to be probably around 5% of your overall damage. So unless they tune it up, it's fairly weak for requiring pretty high maintenance and playing around it. Um, and then the general ability we get is Summon Steward. So it's a 5 minute cooldown, call your steward to bring you a file of serenity that can be used to, uh, or can be consumed to restore 15% health and remove all curse, disease, poison, and bleed effects. So that's the combat benefit of it. This is what it looks like, it walks up to you, gives you some files, and then you can use them whenever you want uh, to heal you and remove those effects. So initially I thought that Kyrian would be a pretty good covenant for PvP, because obviously Files of Serenity, being able to remove curses, poisons, and bleeds from yourself um, on a potion cooldown um, that doesn't actually share a cooldown with potions since those aren't usable in Arena, is pretty strong. Also, uh, just having an essentially a health stone in PvP made sense. And then, whatever target you're hitting, you would be pretty much keeping Shackle the Unworthy on them probably about 80% of the time. So most of the time they're doing reduced damage to you. So in my mind, instantly Kyrian was like, alright, this is the PvP Covenant. However, Files of Serenity currently don't work in arenas. So that makes our general Covenant ability non-existent in arena. And that leaves us with just Shackle the Unworthy, which in Arena by itself is not enough to make the Kyrian Covenant uh, be worth playing at the moment. So I really hope that they make it so Files of Serenity can be used in Arenas, otherwise I don't see this Covenant being used at all by Death Knights. So with the general talk out of the way, let's take a look at the Soulbinds. And first up we have Pelagos. Uh, his first talent is Let Go of the Past. Using a spell or ability increases your versatility by 1% for 10 seconds. Using another spell or ability increases this amount by 1% when it is not a repeat of the previous spell or ability stacking to 5. So This is essentially the Monk Mastery. Um, and also this caters quite a bit towards like the Obliteration playstyle, for example. 
But if you think about it, during Breath of Sindragosa, all you're doing is like pressing obliterates, pressing Rumosis Winter when it's up, and spending your um, Howling Blast Rhyme procs. But usually you end up casting back-to-back -back obliterates quite a few times, so this talent doesn't really work with a Breath of Sindragosa build. Same thing for Unholy, you typically build up wounds, and then you spam out Scourge Strikes, so it doesn't really work too well with Unholy either. Moving now to the second row, we have File of Patience. File of Serenity heals you for 35% additional health, but all of its healing is done over 10 seconds. Again, this might be decent in PvP, but in PvP, it has absolutely no use since you can't use your files at all. Um, then we have Road of Trials. Defeating an enemy grants you 10% movement speed for 20 seconds. This effect is increased if defeating a powerful enemy. Uh, this might be okay Mythic Plus, especially for tanks. But other than that, not too much use in this. And then we have Focusing Mantra. Defeating an enemy lowers the cooldown on your file of Serenity by one second. Um, so that just allows you to use your potion, essentially, more often, which is pretty decent in PvP and for open world. Moving down to the third talent row, we have Bond of Friendship. Defeating an enemy reduces the cooldown on your steward's non-file services by one second. So your steward can do a few other things, um, like I think he can help you respect talents, um, essentially like non-combat abilities. So this has no actual combat implications, it's more like a flavor uh, talent. Then we have Walk Together. Pelagos periodically sends you crafting materials increasing um, for every dungeon, raid, battleground, arena, and quest completed while soulbound. So this one is the resource generating one in this covenant. And then in the last tier, we have Combat Meditation. Shackled the Unworthy increases your mastery by 5% for 20 seconds. Occasionally expels Sorrowful Memories. Walking through Sorrowful Memories extends this effect by 3 seconds. Um, if you play around Shackled correctly, you essentially get a permanent 5% uptime on your mastery. Um, which is decent, but if you compare it to like the Night Fae one, that's 10% mastery. Well, it fluctuates between 7% and 10% if you use Death and Decay on cooldown. It's decent, but it doesn't even come close to the Night Fae one, and that one requires way less micromanagement. So overall, Pelagos is alright for an obliteration build, but in general, I honestly don't see it being used too much in PvE. Then we have Clea. In the first tier, we have Ascendant File. File of Serenity renders you immune to curse, disease, poison, and bleed effects for 15 seconds. Again, sounds good on paper, especially for PvP. Using this and being immune to all those effects in Arena would be super strong, but currently you just can't use it. So unless they change File to be usable in Arena, I don't see this Covenant being any use uh, to Death Knights. Then we have Mentorship. While above 90% health, you increase nearby members' maximum health by 5%. Uh, this might be okay for like Mythic Plus or Raiding. Then in the second tier, we have Resonant Accolades. When receiving healing while above 70% health or healing an ally that's above 70% health, 3% of that healing is repeated on the target over 5 seconds. Uh, might be a pretty decent defensive option. Um, or like for healers, but in general, it's not all that useful for DPS DKs in particular. Then we have Bearer's Pursuit. Your damaging abilities, um, spells and abilities have a chance to decrease your target's movement speed by 30% for 20 seconds. Decent for PvP, but in PvP we typically keep Chains of Ice up constantly, and that's a 70% slow. So while it's nice to get like slows on off targets um, from time to time, in general, it won't make much of a difference. Then we have Pointed Courage. Critical Strike is increased by 1% for every nearby enemy or ally up to 5%. This is actually a pretty good talent, uh, especially in Mythic Plus. You essentially just get 5% crit constantly because you're, you get it either from allies or nearby enemies. And in Mythic Plus and in Raiding, in fact, you're always going to have at least 5 either allies or enemies nearby. So it's just a permanent 5% crit. It's pretty decent. Um, however, not good for Arena because you tend to have less targets around you. Second to last row, we have Cleansing Rites. After 5 seconds out of combat, gain a shield for 10 seconds of your health lasting for 30 seconds. 
This is essentially like resounding protection, but it only works out of combat. Um, so for open world, it's good because you don't get days off your mount. But other than that, it doesn't have too much use. Um, ever forward, while above 90% health, your mounted movement speed is increased by 10%. Again, good for open world, but other than that, it doesn't provide too much use in uh, actual combat. Then the last row, we have Valiant Strikes. You end your nearby allies' critical strike, grant you a stack of Valiant Strike up to 40. At 40 stacks, you heal yourself for 10% of your maximum health, and up to 4 nearby allies for half this effect over 10 seconds. So typically, each Soulbind has two powerful DPS Soulbind traits. This one has a good DPS one and a good tanking one. So Clea might be decent for tanks or Blood Decays in particular, um, or healers, but I don't see her being used too much as a DPS Soulbind. Moving on to Forge Light Prime. In the first tier, we have Charged Additive. File of Serenity also knocks nearby enemies away from you. So this might be pretty good for Sanguine Mythic Plus, for example. Um, I'm not sure how far the knock range is, but I assume it's only like a short knock, like the Engineering knock. Um, most knocks aren't all that far. Then we have Forge Light Filter. When reduced below 35% health, your file of certainty automatically heals you and consumes a charge. Um, this is like Auto Bubble for Paladins from back in Legion or Auto Blur for Demon Hunters. It's similar, it's just an auto health stone, essentially. Uh, then we have Hammer of Genesis. Damaging a new enemy grants you 2% haste for 10 stack seconds, stacking up to 5. So you can get... Um, if you hit 5 new enemies, you can get 10% haste. But again, it's 10% haste for 10 seconds, and then it disappears. Um, getting 10% haste on opener is actually pretty nice. It just helps you do your setup a little bit quicker. So as on holy, you would be able to get your whole setup going faster. But again, I have an issue with abilities that work like this, just because none of the classes get a an instant damage out on their target um like we need to set up even as frost blood the only one that this might be decent for is blood uh, both for frost and unholy i just don't see this uh dps trait being too useful then we have sparkling drift globe core when reduced below 35 percent health you stun nearby enemies for three seconds this effect may only occur once every five minutes so this is like a defensive trait for mythic plus uh, slash arena but it has a five minute cooldown that's a fairly long cooldown on a cheap death that is not all that powerful uh, especially against something that can't be stunned this is essentially useless uh, next we have soul steel clamps after five seconds of standing still incoming stun and incapacitate durations are reduced by 30 percent last for five seconds once you start moving so if you're hitting like a warlock in arena, maybe <laughs> you're just standing still, uh, hitting them the entire time. Also, uh, there are a few raid bosses that CC you, so on those this might be useful. But you gotta keep in mind that you're giving up an offensive trait for essentially a defensive one. Second to last row, we have regenerating materials. Casting or receiving healing has a chance to improve the remaining durability of your armor. Each Covenant has one of these, and this is the armor improving one for Kyrian. Then we have Resilient Plumage, Fall Damage decreased by 20%, and after falling, the damage you take is reduced by, um, I'm not sure what percent, for 30 seconds. So, open world, in general, won't have any benefit on raid encounters or in Arena. Then in the last row, we have a Bronze Call to Action. After using 120 spells and abilities, your next spell or ability summons Brawn, who attacks and heals your targets. So this one is entirely up in the air. Like Abilities like this that summon a Guardian to aid you are either abysmally bad and they do absolutely nothing, um, or they can vary to be really good, uh, and provide a significant portion of your overall damage. So this is entirely in Blizzard's hands and how they tune it. I don't see it being too useful um, 
in like arenas, for example, because it's a little bit RNG. But on raid encounters or even for Mythic Plus, um, it might be all right to use. Uh, like I said, it's going to depend entirely on how much damage and healing it does. Um, there's nothing else to it. But yeah, that was my preview for the Kyrian Covenant. I gotta say, I am a little bit disappointed in the Kyrian Covenant for Death Knights. Um, like I said earlier, whenever I saw the File of Serenity and the Shackle the Unworthy interaction, so taking less damage from whatever you're dotting up, and having the option to pop potions that essentially cleanse all debuffs from you, uh, seemed like a very strong interaction for PvP. Um, but especially after seeing the Necrolord Covenant and the CC immunability that most of the PvP players are running, uh, it seems to be significantly stronger and has way more benefits than the Kyrian Covenant, especially since we only have one Covenant ability available in arenas since files do not work. I really hope they change that. Thank you so much for watching this video and let me know in the comment section what you think of the Kyrian Covenant. After seeing this review video, what do you think they should change about it to make it be actually viable? Because compared to Night Fae, um, even Necrolord, which I consider to be one of the weaker covenants for Death Knights, Kyrian just seems to be way too weak um, compared to the other covenants that we do have available.